five, four, Ooh, three, two, oh, nice. one. Well, what is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Lionheart Podcast. We'll be talking about SmackDown that just happened today. Um, SmackDown was pretty, it, it, in my opinion, it was better than Raw. I think it was better than Raw. Cause it, it, it didn't have as it didn't have as it didn't have any you know it didn't have as much crap as Raw did. Raw had like them, them two crappy matches. SmackDown was pretty decent compared to Raw, in my opinion. The only crap thing about the show was Eve, Eva, uh, Eva Marie. Um, you know, uh, Dragon, are you there? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, let's proceed with the podcast. All right. So uh, starting the show off, we had we had. Uh, Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan, and Randy Orton backstage, and they were pretty much talking about, you know, what happened on Raw yesterday when, uh, you know, Randy Orton came in and RKO'd Brock Lesnar, and, uh, you know, they they told Randy, it, okay, you got to face your punishment. It's going to be some repercussions or whatever, but that was actually pretty awesome. And then Daniel was like, uh, you know, they're, okay, they separated, I think they separated the security. It was one set of security for, uh, for freaking, um, to make sure Brock Lesnar doesn't come in and the other security, I'm not sure. Or maybe all of them just was together for Brock Lesnar or some shit like that. But anyway, uh, to start the show, well, the, the big start of the, sto- uh, of the show was when Dean Ambrose came out and he called out Dolph Ziggler. Now, um, pretty much, you know, he wanted the people to get to know Dolph Ziggler, in which we already know. And then, you know, he pretty much, uh, Dolph was like, you know, Dean, we're, 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 we're very similar, you know, and, and Dean was like, hell no, we're we not similar. And he said that, I, I I don't know if he was referring to them as, as to being resilient, but if he's referring to their gimmick and, you know, in-ring ability, no, no. They're, oh, they're, hell no. They're, 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 they're opposites right there. But um, if you want to talk about them being resilient and all of that, oh, yeah, and, you know, yeah, yeah. But, um... Anyway, they they had a they had a back to back promo, man. They they started off, you know, started they they did they did one of those started from the bottom type promos. Dean talked about how he worked his ass off from you know through a couple of years, I mean throughout the years to get to where he is now, um, you know. And Dolph, he went back to the time where you know he was a part of the Spirit Squad. It was like you did all of that. You remember, Dean? You started off from the Shield. You had people that had your back, but me, I was I was a dude. I, when I started off, I was a cheerleader, bro. And the crowd just started laughing after that, you know, which was true. And um, they just went back and forth. And then you know, Dean, D- Dean, he knew, he said it himself that he knows that they're gonna have a good, at, a good ass match at SummerSlam. It's gonna be, you know, back and forth. And um, he knows that they're gonna steal the show, hopefully. And then um, Zayla got fired up. You know, that man said he ready. He said he gonna burn Brooklyn down to the ground. And he, this man literally took Triple H's line. He was like, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna become the champion because I'm that damn good. I said, Wow. It, it, like it, he got all fired up just like Triple H and literally just took the man line. Oh, hell no. oh, exactly. He took that man line. <laughs> but um. And, 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 you know, Ziggler left, you know, no, Dean left, and Ziggler just sat in the ring looking all, you know, furious and, you know, ready for his match or whatever, and the lights went out, and out of nowhere, Bray Wyatt was in the ring, and, and Sister Abigail out of nowhere, and then Bray, he pretty much, he was in the ring, he said that, you know, he was like, Ziggler, we're going to have a match tonight, you, you facing me, and, uh, you know, if you Ziggler. lose, if you lose, if you lose, <laughs> I'm taking your spot. You're going to have a match tonight, <laughs> you're yep. going to be against me, Bray Wyatt. Yep, he said. Anything. He said, you know, if you lose this match tonight, Ziggler, not not only do you, not only are you a failure, but you know, I'm taking your spot, and you know that that was the main event of the show. But going on to the first show, we had a triple threat match for uh, you know whoever wins this triple threat match moves on to SummerSlam to face the Miz for the IC Championship. It was Kalisto versus Baron Corbin versus Apollo Cruz. Now, first off, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. the winner was Apollo Cruz. This match was pretty obvious. This match was like a little, a, like a little, like a smart game right here. You got Baron Corbin as a heel. It, it, of course, they're not gonna let Baron win. He's the heel. They're not gonna have heel versus heel at SummerSlam. Kalisto, it was possible for him to win, but I just didn't see it happening. But Apollo Cruz, yes, you know, he, he, I think he's the perfect competitor to you know face the face, not Ziggler, to face the Miz at a SummerSlam, and I kind of knew he was going to win, but um, this is what happened throughout the match, um, barely. yeah, yeah, oh, barely, <laughs> he, he, he went this legit, he went this all the way, that man, that barely. man, that man rolled up Kalisto in the pinfall, barely. And, and freaking Corbin was out the ring, I, I was waiting on the barely part, I, I was waiting on the barely part, but well, um, 
While Corbin was out the ring, you know, out of nowhere, Cruz went up for a roll up pin of Kalisto, and that was it. But then after the match, Corbin got pissed off. He started beating the shit out of Kalisto. He was just attacking him from behind, and Apollo saw everything. He ran in the ring. He tried to, uh, you know, he tried to help Kalisto out. As soon as uh, Baron Corbin was beating up on uh, Apollo Cruz, the Miz came in the ring. Hold up, let me see. He hit, he hit the skull crush finale on somebody. Who the hell was it? He, yeah, he hit it. He hit it on Apollo Barely. Cruz. And um, Dragon, that that's kind of. Potato. But anyways, uh, back into the podcast. All right, so we had, uh, you know, Miz hit the score crush oh, finale on the, on Apollo Crews, and after that, you know, Baron Corbin walked up behind Miz like Baron. Cor he he was ready. That man looked up. That man looked at Miz. That man just hit that end of days out of nowhere, and that was it. Baron Corbin was the last man standing. They call him the Lone Wolf. And uh, now, now you might want to use these these sound effects for this next match. E. Marie versus Becky Lynch. This was horrible. Bruh. This shit was Bruh. ridiculous. Bruh. Man. Bruh. Uh. Bruh. Man, this match was so bad. <laughs> it, it wasn't even a match. Like straight up, like the match started, and I I I, I kind of missed what happened. But Eve Marie, something happened to her leg. And she pretty much pretended like she was injured the whole time, and and that was it. She just the referee and the the, the you know and the uh the, the the what's his name, the doctor. He they was checking on her, and they just walked her out the arena, and she was limping or whatever. And this whole time, I don't know if she was trying to act like she was hurt really bad, but she had a big ass smile on her face. It seemed like she was smiling the whole time. It was terrible. Man, I was just like. Yeah. I was really disappointed. I was really disappointed. I hear you go. I was really disappointed in that. Yeah, uh, that was horrible. But um, let's see. Okay, going backstage, we had you know, did they, okay instead of them having backstage interviews with like wrestlers now, I don't know if they're doing this thing where they they, they have the uh, what is that thing called? They have an appreciator, the big old uh, what is it, a pod, a podium, whatever the shit is called. Uh, Renee Young, she was with a uh, Carmelo. They was on a SmackDown Live table. Backstage, and um, you know, as soon as Carmelo was getting interviewed, Natalia came up. She was like, "I thought you was interviewing me, Renee." And Carmelo was like, "Uh, you got a problem with now?" Natalia, she didn't like how Carmelo was getting was getting interviewed instead of her. And Natalia was like, Man, "The queen Carmella, of hearts." She was just like, "Bitch, if you want a burger, eat a burger, eat a burger." You know. Oh wow. Well. Then after that, she was just like, "Bitch, if you want a fry, bitch, a fry, get a fry, fry. Pretty much just sitting her in line. All right, but uh, pretty much, guys, uh, they had a whole, you know, back scene thing. Carmelo, she was in the middle of getting interviewed. Uh, like hey, Son said, Natalia came up. Natalia interrupted uh, the whole thing. And it, it, Carmelo was just like, you know, I don't know what your problem is, you know. But if you do have a problem, we can deal with it later on in the ring. So, you know, it got announced that later on they were going to have a match. But, um... Uh, but uh, after this, you know, after this little interview, after this thing, you know, with their match, uh, Carmella and Natalia's match later on in the night, we had the debut of two great NXT tag, you know, tag team. Um, uh, we all know them, American Alpha. American Alpha versus and, uh, the Vaude Villains. Uh, yeah, by the way, guys, before uh, before I get into this tag team match, quick announcement: SmackDown is getting their own women's title, and they're getting their own tag team titles. That's yeah, really I heard cool. that Daniel Bryan confirmed that uh, you know, they're gonna have their own tag cha tag team championships and their own woman, their own woman, yeah, their own woman championship. So that's gonna be good. Yep. So this is gonna be like two different, Hopefully basically like two different. Yep, yep. yep. So um, this this was a good match between the Vibe Villains and uh, American Alpha, but of course the American Alpha, you that know, was uh, Team Angle, yeah, Team Angle, yep, Team. You know Angle. they they had to beat the Job Villains. The Job Villains got Job Villains. Job Villains. Yep, yep. Uh, their debut, of course, they had to win that debut match, and American Alpha they pulled up the dub. They got that win. Yep, Jason Jordan, that man is a beast. He was dominating that match. That man was just hey, he he was ah making a making a the face sticking his tongue out ah. That man was killing. But uh, they dominated oh, yeah. that match to hit the uh, they finish it. It's like a, it's like a back. It's like a he threw him up in the air and he catch him in the backdrop kind of. It, it, yeah, it's that's what it's like. 
throws him up and turns to yeah. Don't know. They need to come up with a name for that move. I don't know if they have a name for it yet, but it's a it's a pretty good move. But, but um, uh, pretty, yeah, that, that, that's how that ended. Really, that ended that really quick. But uh, after that, it got announced that AJ Styles had something for John Cena. He had a message to send to uh, John Cena. And this right here, so I gotta admit, this was actually a pretty good promo. Mm-hmm. This, this this wasn't bad. This was actually really decent. Went deep, just like the first promo of the show. <laughs> Uh, look, uh, all right, so uh, AJ Styles, you know, his music hit came out, ain't no sunshine. I mean, uh, um, uh, they don't want you know that that hit, you know, AJ Styles came out, and of course, man, I and look, I, so I'm gonna let you talk about this promo, but uh, man, this, this shocked me because when AJ Styles came out, he, not one cheer, that man got booed. The crowd start chanting "Soccer Mom." AJ Styles didn't even get to talk that long. AJ, he 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 just came out and said, "Now I want to send a message to John Dunn." And man, this man got cheered. I don't know if it was because he hosted the Kids Choice Awards or whatever he did, but whatever that man did, he got him some cheers tonight. That man got some cheers. But uh, hey, so I'm gonna let you talk about how you know how this happened and what it went on. All right, well, and man, that man, that man dished Nash. He he did. I said dish. He dissed Nashville, Tennessee. He said they got the weakest minds, and uh, you know, and, and here, here's the thing. He was pretty much lashing out on the kids and the parents, the Cena, the Cena fans. Pretty much, it was like, man, yeah, you guys wear John Cena's gear all the time. You 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 guys pretty much worship this man. I'm just breaking out what he said. He, you, you guys pretty much worship the, this man. But the only reason why I do this, the only cause of that problem is your parents. Y'all parents the reason why y'all believe y'all can get things easily. Like uh you think if you if you win if you uh, participate in a sport you get a trophy. If you do if you have do something you get a reward. But the thing is, I've been here for a long I've been wrestling I've been doing this for a long time. I beat John Cena. I didn't participate. I beat him. I should be getting a full, I should be getting a trophy. I need a trophy. Yo, 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 yo. And AJ, yo, that man said he said winners. He said you particip- he said participants don't make it in life. Winners do. That's what he said. That man had kids crying. Uh, that man had kids upset. <laughs> kids upset. I saw some couple of kids in the crowd. They were they looked kind of upset. Remember, the parents they were looking like whoa. <laughs> I saw yeah, one, kid, know, one parent. He was holding his son. He was looking like, come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, <clears throat> then when Cena responded, oh man. It, uh, this man started. This man started preaching or something. This man was like, "Oh, but the, I do this for the kids. I do this because I love this company." Yeah, you got. I, I was on the ESPYS. I was on. I hosted the ESPYS. I was at the Teen Choice Awards. But at the end of the day, I might be doing other stuff. But, then, but the, at the end of the day, my main home is WWE. He started preaching pretty much. He, he's done this numerous that times. That man said, "I said, uh, AJ, enough uh, is enough." Yep, cutting that begin. I say, uh, enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Preaching or whatever, but uh, Holy shoot. and then AJ was like, uh, AJ, he wanted that scene, he wanted Cena <laughs> to get fired up, and that's what he got Cena. And Cena was like, uh, I'm gonna have to teach your ass a lesson. <laughs> he literally said, I'm gonna have to teach your ass a lesson. <laughs> and AJ started, yeah, he started man, clapping man. for him after that little preach he, he did. After, the, after that little preaching he did, he was clapping. Then at the cross of the clapping with AJ, and AJ was like, uh, you know, that that's what I like. I that's what I like to see Cena, and he was like, pretty much, you know, uh, you can challenge yeah, me. That man told you fired up. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, see, not only did Cena shut AJ up, that man also shut his critics up tonight. That man oh, shut yeah. his critics up. The, okay, AJ asked him. He said, "Cena, why are you still here? Oh why yeah, that's it. This this was Cena's response. Cena said, "I'm here because of love." He said, and when, he said, when a lot of people hear me say, uh, when, like you know, men say love, they think of weak people. And Cena said, you know what? I don't care, man. I'm a grown ass man. That man, he said, that man, he went in. He went on all everybody. Yep, and he said AJ's that just there. To AJ, he said, yep. you're here just to just to be a great wrestler. I'm not just here because of that. And you know, as soon as things start falling down falling down for you and all, you probably just gonna go somewhere else. And out and the crowd was like, yep. Ooh. I said, damn. Oh, uh, yep. And um <clears throat> then you know AJ Chandler seen it later on and then you know seen accepted his challenge and, and after that that's when he said I gotta teach your ass a lesson and that was it right up. so I mean this was kind of obvious we were gonna have a SummerSlam AJ and Cena mm-hmm. I'm not shocked I mean I wasn't shocked about the match you know like oh my gosh we're gonna see I already knew it was gonna happen but the build up to this match better equal this match's quality like seriously 
Cause like this match better not suck, but the build up was great, and the build up better not suck, and the match was great. Yeah. You know, I, I everything should. I hope it's gonna be level. So yeah, but um, after that, uh, we next. I would love to talk about Randy Orton versus Fandango. As we all know, yesterday on Raw, Randy Orton, well, Paul Heyman, of course, you know, said over and over again, just to backtrack you guys, uh, Brock Lesnar returned to Raw. And uh, they were talking smack about Orton, how he was a third-generation superstar, and how he was giving everything, and Brock Lesnar had to earn this and earn that and earn that. And he basically yesterday, Paul Heyman was saying that Randy Orton will never touch Brock Lesnar with an RKO. And let's just say tonight, uh, it's really capable like capable for the beast to you know, infiltrate SmackDown. Of course, yesterday, as we all know, that Randy Orton infiltrated Raw. Well, tonight, Brock Lesnar got some revenge, which this was pretty predictable. Brock Lesnar infiltrated SmackDown, point Ace on. Of course, yeah, like I said, it was predictable, but Ace on actually predicted this yesterday in the podcast, if you guys watched that. Uh, he actually predicted that this will happen. And, I mean, Brock Lesnar came out. Uh, Orton hit an F5 on Fandango because uh, if you guys don't remember, back at the Battleground pay-per-view when Orton first returned, uh, Chris Jericho asked Orton. He said, Orton, why would you you know, accept this match with Brock Lesnar? And Orton said, well, I can't come back and face a guy like Fandango. And that's funny because he, he he, it's, gave a it's so funny camera. that he actually faced Fandango. <laughs> that wink might have yeah, gave, yeah, gave him the crowd at people a hint, or he might have winked just to not you know, show Fandango that he was in dissing them or whatever. But. Yeah, like, yeah, like tonight, that's why they had that match. They had that match because Fandango wanted revenge on Orton for what he said about him. Uh, so, like, or like uh, Randy was trying to keep his eyes on both people. Like, Brock was outside the ring. Fandango was inside the ring. Fandango ran at Orton. Quick RKOs in no time. As soon as Orton got up, F5, referee calls the bell. The uh, security, Shane McMahon comes out. Uh, Daniel Bryan, everybody. Man, yep. like, you got the crowd chanting Suplex City. We go to commercial break. We come back from a commercial break. Uh, Lesnar is being taken out the arena with Paul Heyman to their black SUV. I mean, the crowd is still chanting Suplex City, and it, it's just insane. And this is the jacked up part about it. Orton was in no mood to talk about after this F5. Like, okay, Orton came out the trainer's office. He was looking fine. He was looking great. It looked like nothing was wrong with him. He came out the training room. And I don't know who this was, but this woman walked up to him with the interview, and she was just like, Orton, you know, how do you feel knowing that you just took this F5 from Brock Lesnar? And Orton looked at her like, He just got this water, he was like, bro, and just kept going. Yeah, yeah. He didn't say nothing. Yeah, yeah. That man is... I, 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 th- I think he was going to RKO her out of nowhere. You know, he thought about doing that, maybe. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, man, what, I, I think that for in order for Brock, like, Andy to beat Lesnar, I think we're gonna have to go back to seeing that 2010 Viper, that ruthless doing anything, the the the, the Viper that RKO Stephanie McMahon. Oh yeah. The Viper that was about the big knee, you know, uh, punt Stephanie McMahon's head off. The Viper that punted Mr. McMahon's head off. We're gonna need to see a ruthless, dangerous Viper, and I think that at SummerSlam we're gonna get a ruthless Viper. Oh yeah, most definitely. And, uh, yeah, I think that match. Uh, hopefully that match be good. That's all I gotta say. Hopefully it be good. I can't really predict too much about that match, but I hope it be good. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. But uh, moving on, we had Natalya versus Carmella. Now this match started. Hey, 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 but before we get to that, uh, let's talk about what's gonna happen next week on uh, SmackDown. He Slater appears in Daniel Bryan's office. Oh yeah, that's right. That did happen today. And uh, like uh, he Slater came into Daniel Bryan's office, and he was just like. He looked up at the summer poster, and no, I'm not trying to cut you off. By oh no, you good, you good. Just trying to, get, like, uh, but uh, he like, looks up at the SummerSlam poster, and he's just. I like, should be on that poster. You know, yeah, I should be on that poster. I would look nice. I would look nice on this one. He then he turns to Daniel. Daniel's just like, why are you in my office? How'd you even get in here? He's like, where's security? He said, and like you know, Daniel was just like, oh yeah, that's right. Security's trying to deal with the beast right now. So he Slater was just like, I'm the hottest free agent here, Daniel. You just gotta give me an opportunity. You gotta. Br- Brian was just like, you gotta earn your opportunity, Slater. And so he said, How about this? Next week on SmackDown, you're gonna have a match. He said, Guess who your opponent's gonna be? And he was just like, He he. I forgot who he named. He named uh. uh oh no no. Slater named. Well, he he said uh, he said that guy uh, that that fake guy Jericho mentioned on Monday. I forgot what his name was. 
Yeah, I, I forgot what his name was too. But um, first, like okay, so out of nowhere, he was just like uh, Daniel Brown was just like okay, Slater, your opponent's gonna be go. And, you heard, <laughs> and, and as soon as he Slater got speech, <laughs> like that's all you heard. Is your opponent's gonna be who? <laughs> And they said, you know, oh. Rhino was up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Rhino, and, I, and that pretty much and showed you that. Daniel Bryan was just like, uh, Rhino. Then he got back on his phone. And he was just like, uh, can somebody call a pet, you know, a paramedic to my office, please? You know, a medic? Uh, I think we're going to need one. But, yeah. Yep, so that pretty much tells you that Heath Slater is facing um, Rhino next week on SmackDown. And if Heath Slater loses, then he doesn't get his contract. And if he wins, he get his contract for SmackDown. Uh, yeah. Then after that, we had this little thing with the champion and his girlfriend, Renee and Dean Ambrose. She pretty much talked to Dean Ambrose about how he feels, you know, facing Dolph Ziggler at SummerSlam. Yep. Or wh whoever, you know, Dean Ambrose was going to face. And Dean Ambrose was just like, let me tell you something, Renee. I just don't care. I'll see you at home, honey. Make sure you stay freshened up. Then he just walked out there with the title and just and disappeared in the dark. Yep, he said he ain't like that head, so he just took it off. And Renee was trying to pick it, she was trying to pick it up or whatever. Yep. But, um, all right, now the next match was Natalia versus Carmella. Now, this match really wasn't a match, it wasn't a match to be honest. Carmella was coming out in her entrance, she was on the mic doing what she do best. But Natalia came out and attacked her, and she, she, she pretty much put in a sharpshooter, and she was tapping out. And referee tried to break it up, and all, and Natalia just walked off. And you know, they now they they they, they try they, they you know, they call her the Queen of Hearts now. Now that she's a hill, they actually call her the Queen of Hearts. Now she's always been a Queen of Hearts, but they're they're starting to use that name more now that she's a hill, the Queen of uh, Hearts and stuff. But um, yep, that was it. That that wasn't the match, and that, that all started because of what happened earlier. You know, when uh Carmelo was in, was getting interviewed by Renee Young, and you know we mentioned that early on in the show. So, but yeah, moving on to the main have event, a match. Ziggler versus Bray right, Wyatt. So, uh, wait, wait, before 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 that event. before that happened. Um, Ziggler was backstage warming up when Dan Bryan and you know Shane walked in. You know they remind him that he's poten he's potentially giving up his title shot. And Ziggler, he you know he said he has a screw he has a he's pretty much has a screw you for the ones you know walking off and all for them walking off. Oh, what you say? I had to take my headset off. For no, second. Ziggler said he 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 did this. I didn't I didn't see this part, but it's in the website it says he has a screw you for them wa before walking off. I guess he was telling people, he was pretty much saying, screw, before you, like, walk off on me, you know, screw you, pretty much. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess that's what he was doing, because I, I didn't see that part. But, um, moving on to the main event, I'll let Dragon talk about it. Oh, uh, well, man, Bray Wyatt versus Dogs. Like, this match was actually really good. For, I mean, for a second, I was thinking, well, maybe they could be setting up for a story mode of where the chances to face Dean Ambrose is going to get passed on from person to person, from week to week to week. And then it hit me that they had already had this stuff printed up. They have Dolph Ziggler versus Dean Ambrose printed up all over the place, posters everywhere. So, you know, you're not going to put up all those posters, all that stuff, just for Dolph Ziggler to lose that opportunity like that. So I was just like, no, nah, Ziggler's going to win this match. Of course, after a great match, Ziggler did win this match. Uh, at one point, uh, Bray Wyatt hit that uh, that bearded rock bottom. I forgot what it's called. It's like, yeah, Ziggler, I, Ziggler I, sold I, that. That man sold that. Yeah, that man, that man sold it. That, that, that was hard. Ziggler, that was pretty. He, he flipped all around. Uh, that was it. And uh, that like I really thought the referee hit three. I don't know if it was a botch or what, but oh yeah, I thought he hit one. three. Two, and I, th I think three. at some point in this match, oh, like oh. like before they went to commercial break, like uh, Bray Wyatt was hitting his hand on the mat. Like he kept he kept like constantly banging his head on the mat. I think he might have possibly re-injured himself. It, it looked like he re-injured himself. I don't I ain't catch the part where he uh you know might have hurt himself. I just saw him banging his head on the mat. And I looked on Twitter, oh, some yeah. people were saying he might have he might have injured himself again or something like that. Yeah, but like uh like when we came back Frustration, from the commercial break, much. he was hitting yeah he was hitting a suplex. Uh, like, you know, like he was, you know, he had a superplex off the top rope. Yeah. Like, you know, nothing never happened. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was, I, I, for a second, I got worried. He might have just took a hard bump or something. Again. That's it, you know. Yeah. But uh, pretty much th this whole night ended. Uh, Warrior Wyatt was trying to take off the turnbuckle pad. Uh, referee stopped him. Dolph, I, was, yeah, I think Dolph Ziggler finished taking off the turnbuckle pad. Yep. Threw it down. And, uh. 
Like Bray Wyatt, like uh, Dolph Ziggler was in the corner. Like Bray Wyatt hit Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Ziggler got in the corner. Uh, Wyatt had ran. Wyatt had ran at Ziggler. And ring post. Uh, Ziggler moved. Yep, yep, yep. Right into that open metal rod. Bray Wyatt hit the metal. Sweet chin music or sweet chin Ziggler. And uh, one, two, three. His new, you know, that new super kick, that finisher. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was it. Ziggler retained his opportunity. And um, after that, this kind of shocked me because I, I was like, this kind of really, this kind of ruined the night. I think they really should have ended the night with Ziggler. Uh, I think really do think they should have ended the night with Ziggler and Dean Ambrose just having a face to face stare down. But instead, they had Eric Rowan come out and uh, Eric Rowan attack Ziggler. And then Dean Ambrose was just like, oh, hell no, you know, that ain't going to happen on my show. He jumped in the ring from, with the double team. And then. I mean, Bray Wyatt took care of him, and pretty much uh, Sister Abigail is on Ziggler. Dean Ambrose was already out, and SmackDown goes off the air with Roman. I mean, uh, not Roman. Rowan. Well, they're both boring, but not not Roman. Rowan and uh, Wyatt, you know, on top of Ziggler, and the fans booed. Yep, like so the that, fans booed yeah, that, off the that air. pretty much tells you that next week on SmackDown, the main event, we probably, we most likely going to see Dean and, uh, you know, Ziggler team up against. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Eric Roman, most likely. Yep. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty predictable. Pretty predictable. Yep, so what you rate this show, Dragon? Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, i give it an 8 out of 10. i give it a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. It was, like, uh, I, I, what really killed it was the Eva Marie match. That was horrible. That 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 was kind of bad. And then on top of that, later on when we're supposed to have another another Divas match, it also never happened with Natalia is breaking out. So we really are not Diva. We really didn't have any women's matches tonight. Yeah, the women's yeah, matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah the they, they they pretty much yeah threw that off the show completely. The woman the yeah, woman didn't get a then, chance to you know have a match. Yeah, and then to top it all off, the ending of SmackDown was kind of you know. It, it wasn't all that. I, I really do think they should have kept the Eric Rowan and Wyatt thing, you know, a surprise until next week or something. Instead of them ending it with Eric Rowan and Wyatt, I, I, it, it wasn't that good. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a song 7.5 and me, 8 out of 10. Yep. Uh, but uh, a song. <laughs> Bada boom. <laughs> He's the finest guys in the room. He and A song. So A song. Let me ask you something, bro. How you doing? Uh, uh think of E Marie's wrestling career. That's how I'm doing. 